yeah, yeah, I've got. You got what? Welcome to Bonehead Weekly. That's what you got. Now, Chad, you gave us an idea for an episode that I honestly was kicking the shit out of myself and because I couldn't believe after 300 <laughs> episodes, we had never done this topic. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe we did either. And it's going to be funny if we actually did it and we just don't remember it. But now, Chad, I, is we're your still name... publishing the fucking thing. Yeah. Is your chat, Chad, is your name an allusion to Fing Fang Foom? Bing Ooh, Bang. No, because I don't want to get sued or canceled. What? What's the problem with Fing Fang? He's a giant dragon. I don't you know that dragon? you can get canceled if you ain't got nothing to cancel. <laughs> True. <laughs> I don't think that works with us. <laughs> I didn't even make the Fing Fang Foom connection, James, until just now. By then why the way, did you write Bing you, Bang Boom? For for those I don't I don't know why know, Fing Fang Foom is a giant dragon that's immortal in the Marvel universe. But it's but, not been filmed yet, but it but really should be. In early in early iterations, he is very, very uh Asian stereotype. Yeah, well, I, I didn't. I wasn't born in the 1950s, 40s, 50s, or 60s. Yeah. I only know him from the trading cards in the late, uh, in the early 90s onward. <laughs> oh, by the way, spoiler: uh, one of my picks for this movie, very, very not picks. not acceptable for this for for today's culture. Hey, can we talk about something that we never talk about? Uh, I guess. I mean, we might as well start doing something. Well, we always talk. Well, I guess we've already got into the topic, but no, let's go, go for it. We were just talking about beforehand, and this, and I bet we have some horror films because we're talking about what, Chad? Oh, so we're going to be talking about some of the most gruesome deaths in movie history. So I just watched Insidious: The Red Door, and I'm kind of a, and he wanted to paint it black. I wanted to not open it. Uh, as I've said, and I'll be doing a review for Scarefest, but Chad not Chad said he made it through it and it was almost unwatchable. And I watched it and I actually like the Insidious movies okay. And it's terrible. You know what that movie doesn't have? Hmm. Gruesome deaths. Yeah, not a one. Also doesn't have any scares. Yeah, I don't Interest, remember. Compelling characters. Oh, Sorry, so you're saying down. it's pretty much this, my biography. No, no, you're by, you just got nominated for an award for helping somebody named Wang write a letter. That, awesome. None of that. Well, one of those things is accurate. Out of all, out, out of those words that you somehow strung together. Your last name is Wang. That's also, in, in your biography, we're in it. Yeah. So. I, I with my assessment at this time. Yeah, you so, should go jump for you should go plate in traffic right now. You, you should just go play with your wang. Go go grab your playmobiles. Get there in the middle of traffic. Well, don't grab your uh, wang in front of people. I don't <laughs> think any of y'all are saying words that make nary bit of sense. <laughs> I think there's people giggling right now about your wang. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not. You should. That's you for the fans. Hey, by the way, the by the way, before you get canceled, sir, you can't own wang. Huh. There's a long pause there. Why don't one of you help me out? Dead air, dead air. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know exactly where to what you meant by that. So yeah. I'm, I'm just letting it lie. So I don't. I'm just get saying. I, I need my job. A, Wang is funny. So yes, you and 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 Wang in the um, cellar with the candlestick holder. Okay, dude. Clue don't have a cellar. There's a basement in Clue. Yeah, basement and cellar is a different thing. Cellars What's historically. Uh, historically, so, uh, stored uh, dried goods in, in a cellar because it was it was, you know. Well, if you or, don't get or, one or, of them or, sup pumps, it's all going to get wet. Or, or preserves, in. you could put your preserves in your in your I'm jarred about to, goods. About to preserve your job, I'm glad you got nominated with your wang. So technically, could you have a cellar in a basement? You could only it would if actually it had kind of off off it, because they also historically were dark. We had one growing up until it collapsed. So in other words, it's a it's a room in a basement. Therefore, it's a basement. Well, no. no. It, it has to have a technically, Chad. If, if it's off base, has to have a dweller in it. <laughs> a cellar dweller. A cellar dweller, gentlemen. Uh, Just still <laughs> better than Insidious: The Red Door. I don't know. I haven't seen. I've seen cellar dwellers since the eighties, and I was a kid. So that's our topic this week. We're going to talk about gruesome deaths. Yeah. So who wants to go? You want well, me to go first? I got one. I'll go first. I'm. I'm you got I'm one. Guy. Yeah, I've got one. Because here's, 
Here's you're... here's what I'm going to say. It's not gruesome like there's blood everywhere, but I think yeah. I was thinking when you first pitched this idea, Chad, I thought, why do I do this show still? But after I got through that existential <laughs> moment, I've been asked I... by other people. <laughs> why I do listen. it? Yeah. No. Well, <laughs> it's a good point. Uh, no. Um, Dead air. Uh, no, no. What I was gonna say is, I, and what I thought gruesome, and I was like, oh yeah, there's a lot of them that you know oh, uh, that may, but uh, I thought gruesome to me also means God. There's so many better ways to go, mm. and and I think one, and it's not from a film or a television series, it's from a script. Um, I think one of the best deaths ever, and he actually has a couple of these or near deaths throughout his work, and and you knew it was going to bring him at some point. But the original script that Harlan Ellison did for City on the Edge of Forever, when Crewman Beckwith is his punishment at the end for messing with the timeline. Now, if you've seen this episode, McCoy gets drugged up, mess, he, he goes out of his mind, jumps back in time. Ellison's original script, it, had, they, it was going to be, there's very few death penalties in the Federation, but somebody was sentenced to it for selling drugs and causing the death of other crewmen. The character's name was Beckwith. And they had to, They you're not allowed to kill them on the ship because of regulations. You basically have to take them to a planet and take care of them. Um, and of course, uh, that was a little bit dark for the time, so it ends up getting changed and all that. However, one of the things that um, the original ending of the episode was, he's the one that causes all the issue with time because he escapes. And because he interferes with time, they have to go back and stop him. When the time gets resolved... You know, there's they're, they're, they still have to figure out what they're going to do with him, and the guardians, because it's plural, they were people. The guardians of forever go. Nope, you're no longer allowed to punish him. We get to, and his death is that they keep teleporting him in time to the middle of a sun. So they bring him back to life, and for all eternity, he gets teleported into the middle of a sun. And brought back and sent back and brought back and sent back and brought back and sent back because he messed with time. It is one of the bleakest 1960s television plot points that, of course, never made it to air. But it is the idea because there was going to be, it was in the script, I believe, and I may be misremembering, but how they were actually going to film it. And it would have been him burning and then literally being teleported back in over and over and over for all eternity. So I don't see that very gruesome me because as soon as you hit the sun, you evap you evaporate immediately. There's yeah, no way. I like evaporate better. Evaporate. No. Well, and that I was do. the entire time. So uh, that, and that was the entire thing, though, because how long would you actually feel anything? Very little. But whatever that little, that infinitesimal amount of time is, that's what they keep sending him back to. Hmm. That's and so it's constant. Bar I mean, literally. I think in 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 one of his comments, Ellison was like, "What would hell actually be if it was burning? There's nothing more burning than the sun, and to be constantly reincarnated in that moment of pain for all eternity is pretty gruesome. I, I mean, because I that would be I, I was thinking, no, that would that would have to suck. Like you die, but you don't get to die. They literally keep messing with time to make you come back and experience that infinitesimal." amount of burning it's one of the most gruesome ways to go i could think of and so i thought i'd use it to kick this off and if you by the way the script's available if you want it uh want to get it uh hard Olson's works are getting ready to get re-released by jms john michael strusinski uh as the editor neil gaiman's doing new introductions for them but uh i don't know if they're going to re-release the city on the edge of forever but it's out there as a book you can read it matter of fact they actually did a comic book adaptation of the original script as well a couple of years ago. But hit that original ending, um, I love Ellison. It's a great script. The The script that made it to television was an award winner too, but that's a bleak, bleak, gruesome way to punish somebody. So that's, that's a gruesome death for me. I mean, it, it stuck with me. Chad, you want to go next? <laughs> sure. All right. So I was going to talk about this earlier. I got sidetracked. There's a ton of gruesome deaths out there. We could probably do several episodes on this. Mm -hmm. You could do a whole episode on Damien Leone, who's a nice guy and director of Terrifier and Terrifier 2, of just those gruesome deaths. Right. But 
when you said gruesome deaths, I said vicious, you know, whatever. We were going back and forth. I was thinking it has to kind of stick with you a little bit. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh, it yeah. has to kind of stick all, with you. Like all James, of mine, all James of mine is, stuck with me. Right. James has a good example, right? Like that, yes. You, but over and over and over. And if you start thinking about that and you're invested in it, that's that's pretty gruesome. One of the most traumatized, I shouldn't say traumatizing. But if you Google this, you get several different lists, and I don't agree with a lot of them. But one of them had this buried, buried, and it shouldn't have been buried. It is Ari Esther's Hereditary, and it's Charlie, the little girl's death in the movie. That's a good one, man. And honestly, I don't even know if it's the death as much as it is when we cut back to the head on the road. Right. See, yeah. I don't necessarily think it's the death itself. It's his reaction to it. His reaction and his mother's reaction because he goes home, parks the car, leaves her headless corpse in the car, goes to bed. She gets up the next morning and he's wakened by, what do we hear? Screaming. And right. then we cut to Charlie's head beside the road covered in ants. Right. Busted up with her tongue out of it. Which that whole yeah. scene still, oof. Hereditary Ari Esther is an extremely Ari Esther is an extremely talented guy, making these movies horror films that are and aren't horror films. Like I say, Midsummer, wonderful movie. Is it a horror film? Is it not? Well, to me, it's a movie about a bad breakup. That's what it is to me. But Hereditary, definitely a horror film, and you are either on on board with that third act. Or not, I was always on board with it. I loved it mm -hmm. from the moment I watched it. <clears throat> so that's one that kind of stuck with me. It's like, surely this isn't, ah, uh, there it went. And then you think, oh, well, a head by a pole, that's, that's going to be, it's the way he builds it. It's the way that the mother is just absolute losing her mind of her son drove home with his sister's body in the car because he couldn't handle it, couldn't process it. Right. Yeah, it's just. I remember being, I saw that movie on the back of a chair in an airplane coming back from. Watch that on an airplane? I watched it on an airplane. That was my introduction to Hereditary. I watched it on a fucking airplane. Dude, I didn't realize they let stuff like that on an airplane where other people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Next yeah. Year. Yeah. Um, Dude, I. I literally was watching stuff, as I said. I caught off up my on socks, my movie If you're watching. listening to this episode, here they are. Uh, that's something for some. You know, if they're listening, listening and you holding them up, anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, uh, I just held up my socks. Yeah. But yeah, I just remember seeing that on the plane. I want to say it was coming back from Los Angeles, but it might, I don't, that doesn't sound right. But anyway, um, going, what the hell is happening here? And then the, 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 the death scene, I'm like, I've almost went, said something out loud in the in the the airplane and but then and then the ending this is how the ending went great i was like what the fuck is this right in the middle of the airplane i couldn't i couldn't stop it and then so as we were landing too and i was like oh people are gonna think i'm we're crashing yeah it's so good <laughs> he's such a talented person but i i watched that in the theater i think i watched that maybe by myself i'm not for sure i snuck away i got away from where kid was barely born it's just such a good movie. And that death scene, so like you were talking about, just soul-crushing, gruesome, stuck with you. Man, hard to beat that. Yeah. Chad. And I'm going that same route. Uh, this is one of those scenes in a movie that just absolutely floored me when I saw it. And this was actually my introduction to this movie. Uh, and I'll go more into it as soon as I tell you what it is, which it's Emil Antonovsky's death in RoboCop. Yeah, I was wondering which one of you was going to do it because I almost said it and I was like, no, somebody else will grab that one. Yeah, it's it's my first pick. It's my first, it's my, I, honestly, I think out of everyone on my list, it's my most obvious one. But uh, everyone so, remembers it. Yeah, and this was my introduction to RoboCop. I, 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 this is one of those scenes where it actually is automatically ingrained in my brain as a, as a, as a memory that I don't think will ever go away. I was at my, uh, I was at my cousin's house uh in bullet county kentucky and mm -hmm. uh one of the things about going to their house is they had cable we didn't have cable so uh and we'd all whenever we went up there we'd always stay the weekend and then come home uh well that night everybody uh all of my cousins and my brothers had gone to bed uh 
I was downstairs and I turned on the TV and I was like flipping through it. And then I came to the scene as soon as the toxic waste falls on him and he comes out just skin dripping over and then the car just smashes into him and he explodes. And I was a fan of RoboCop from that day to this <laughs> day. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and actually wanting to see that movie was a goal of mine because I had no way of accessing it at the time. My video store didn't have this guy's. I could not see RoboCop. I didn't see RoboCop till several years later. How did your video store not have that? Uh, man, it was one of those those mom and pop stores. They didn't have everything. Hence why I never saw Indiana Jones. But it's RoboCop. I know. Um, so, uh, yeah. So seeing Emil's death, and it's still one of those scenes that I will randomly play in my head from time to time. It's weird. I don't know why it pops up, but I just it makes me smile. It's so gruesome. And it, it's 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 a it's a slow gruesome too because I mean at first he's just normal and then he, the toxic waste falls on him and then you see him in all his gore, and you see Ray Weiss's expressions as he falls on top of him or falls into him. It's Ray Weiss, right? I'm not making it's not I'm not yeah, doing it's Ray a Weiss. Okay, Ray thank Weiss. God. Yeah, I was like, please God, don't make get me away do from me, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, at first I thought I might be doing it might be Jesse Goins, uh, but no, it's Ray Weiss. Get okay. Away from right uh, yeah yeah you're right i know i was right it's just after the incident of where i put a scene from the ref into gremlins yeah i second guess myself every time it's a little weird <laughs> i know i don't know why i did that um but yeah and then and then the eventual just full-on explosion as the car hit him it, it yeah i it's i'm still playing it over and over again in my head so yeah that that was that had to have been my first pick james James. Yeah, sorry, I had I had muted my mic. You know, I actually thought was thinking of other things that stuck with me, and and you were thinking and, of other things. I was thinking of hot dogs. I was thinking of <laughs> oh, that would be good. You got one, maybe a little no. chili cheese. Oh, no, nothing no, too, not with me right, not you, right now. You bring it up, but you don't have. Okay, that's fine. It's not, it's not, it's not a, your choice, I'm but whatever. Not a good uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I yeah, you know, I had other lists before we started filming but you you talking about robocop chad got me thinking there's a there's a film that a lot of people saw it even got a sequel that's not very good uh but um and it has a it has some gruesome deaths in it one involving barbed wire but the one that that i was thinking when you were talking about the robocop scene is um silent hill a that mm -hmm. that alarm effect still sticks with me. That that sound. Uh, whoever whoever did that sound and tied it. And I know it's based on the game, but that movie. The the fact every time you hear that siren, you know, you just know. Um, the burning of Officer Sybil in Silent Hill. Where, oh you yeah. Know, she's, she's screaming. She's just a child. She's just a child. And they light her up. Mm -hmm. And it's just that burning. You know, and, and it comes back later, you know, fire doesn't purify it, blackens it, destroys it, whatever. But just burning somebody alive because you disagree with them. I mean, obviously there's historic precedent, but it's a gruesome scene to as you watch somebody burn. Just it's brutal. Yeah. So I that's it. I mean, there's not much I can say about it. I mean, if you've never seen Silent Hill, it's about the town of Silent Hill. And there's uh, a cult and some demons going on there and weirdness and all that stuff. And this this lady and her daughter get trapped there. And and there is an officer that tries to help them and it doesn't go well for her. Yeah. Hmm. So mine, am I next? Yep. We're also, gonna great, uh, also, Alice Creech is in it. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I feel like we're going to get shit on a lot on this gentleman because I mentioned Terrifier and I and a lot of these lists are several different death scenes in the Saw movies. I actually will sit here and tell you that I enjoyed thoroughly the first Saw film. I enjoyed the second one in the theater. Up until the third, I enjoyed them because until the third, they made fairly logical sense. I have since rewatched a little bit of the third one and some of the second one. Not as enjoyable as it was 12, 13 years ago. For some odd reason, maybe it's just old hat now. 
I know we're going to get shit on because I'm assuming most of you all don't have Saw deaths on your list. No. Uh, no. Because I mean, honestly, I, I honestly, guys, I think the ones on my list are make Saw seem kind of boring. So I said that to say this one I'm about to say isn't that gruesome as far as the blood. But when you take the complete situation of what's going on, what they've been through, and how it ends, this could go, truly, for one of the most downbeat endings of any movie ever made. And we've talked about it a little bit on here before, but when you talk about gruesome and setting with you forever and ever, it is uh, Billy and the other ones at the end of The Mist. And uh, well, the protagonist, Davy Dr- David, has shoots everyone who's left stranded in the car when they run out of gas, including who, Chad? Who, James? His son. 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 Because the creatures are coming. He's out of bullets. He is dry-clicking the revolver at his head. And it won't because he used all the bullets on the three remaining people. And right. one of them is his son. And it floors me. Yeah, I remember we were in the theater. Could not get over that one. Stephen King has said it numerous times. I think we've talked about it on the show. Mm -hmm. He would have ended the novella if he'd have thought of that ending. That's how he would have ended it. Right. That's Frank Darabont. Frank Darabont couldn't get the movie made for years because he refused to change his ending of what he thought was perfect. It is a perfect ending, but it is gruesome. It is just tears you apart and it's really really good acting from oh my god thomas my jane god. thomas jane he's so good in it he's so good in it sometimes thomas jane's just miscast mm-hmm. but if you get him in the right just kind of quirky little role like 1922 another stephen king adaption he is fantastic in that it's on netflix i uh, go watch it boogie nights boogie nights Quirky role, right? You got to get yeah. him in that last little. It can't just quite be the leading man. It has to be a little bit more. He murders his only son, his basically his girlfriend and his friend. By and the way, then uh, what happens a minute later? Every uh, spoiler, spoiler: the government <laughs> shows up. Yeah, if you I haven't mean, seen, if you the... haven't seen the mist, uh, and you're listening to this, well, I guess I don't know. Barbara was, has been on a show, and every once in a while, I, she and I become friends. We'll be messaging, and, and I will be shocked at the shit that she hasn't seen. And she's a self pronounced horror nerd. And I was like, What do you mean you haven't seen this? I hope she saw the mess because you just ruined that whole movie for her. Yeah, that's the best part of the movie. <laughs> I don't know. That whole movie's really good. The there movie's really one, good. The monsters are nowhere near as bad as the people in the store. But Marsha, Marsha Gay Harden. Marsha Gay Hart is fucking fantastic. Yeah. That's an Oscar worthy performance in that. That's the ass. Instead, she got the Oscar for Pollock. Did she really? I think so. I think she got an Oscar for her best supporting actress for Pollock. I have no recollection. I will I look it I've up after I've seen Pollock. I will look it up after my 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 part here. <laughs> That's mine for gruesome. I know it's not quite as gruesome, but it's, man, it just knocks you down. So uh for mine, uh in terms of the sheer length of this death and the gruesomeness of it, I don't think much can top it. Uh, I am talking about the original version of Martyrs. Dude, it is a gruesome, gruesome, downbeat, just... That movie's gray. It makes yeah. you feel gray. Yeah. It, there there's nothing about this movie that you can say oh yeah i feel good about that no or it, it's it's painful or anybody who would watch it and say ah ha ha like there's some movies and i get it we were we were talking earlier about well i said to earlier terrifier and i get that certain people are like ha 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 that was so gruesome and uh, laughing you don't do that with martyrs martyrs it's no not tongue-in-cheek it, there's not yeah um the this was the first, uh, this is actually not, this was the second one that came up. Uh, I'm saving my, the one that made me come up with the topic of this episode for last. <laughs> but uh, yeah. immediately after that, I'm like, oh, I got to talk about martyrs. Uh, and if you haven't, and by the way, I st- again, there was a 2015, 2017, re- I think it was 2015 remake um, mm-hmm. that is nowhere near as good 
as the 2008 version. I, I, I didn't watch it either. I've seen bits and pieces of it. And I could tell just by the bits and pieces of it, I'm like, I have no desire. It cannot touch the 2008 version. It's about these uh, two women who are uh, seeking revenge uh, against uh, the people who tormented um, one of them as a child. Um, And her and her friend uh, go to seek vengeance. And it starts out with that plot. But then uh, people who are listening to their show, if you haven't seen it, it veers off course and I'm not going to ruin this one. I'm not going to tell you what happens uh, right. because I'm I don't sure if to. you're a fan of the show, we've ruined it before, but go ahead. I don't even remember talking about it before. Oh, we've talked about martyrs on here. Before. Oh yeah. Yeah. I bring it up a couple times. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, no, it just proves you don't listen to me. That's fine. That's what? only proves he hasn't <sighs> listened to the show. Huh? What? um no it, yeah it uh but yeah the very the just the lead up to the end it, it's it's a hard watch it's it's a death that you don't want to see you feel for these people um and as it progresses you're like oh god just please let it end and it just keeps going so martyrs james yeah. oh martyrs that's that's a good one that's uh anyway after we get done watching that baby town frolic uh anyway <laughs> The, we're uh, gonna have to tell me where we talked about that because i really i do not remember us ever talking about uh, we've talked uh, but about again, it's, a couple of times on the show actually it's 300 episodes in i don't remember what he talked about last episode yeah it's usually i'm going to go remember. again i'm going to go with something it has been in film uh i'll be honest i don't think it's ever been done in film as brutally as it's done in the actual original work and it's hard uh it, it's my favorite work by this author um but it's it's brutal because it's multiple deaths in one. I mean, it's the one character, but they die effectively multiple deaths. Uh, and that's Lavinia and Titus Andronicus. If you've never read Titus Andronicus by William Shakespeare, it was considered for a long time one of his darkest and quote unquote dirty plays. It was early. Oh um, man, honestly, it may be my favorite. It is. It is my favorite. I honestly, so I went when I was when I was in England and we toured the rebuilt globe. And I asked the guy that was doing the tour, I said, okay, I've got to ask, when was the last time Titus was performed here? And he went, he he looked at me and he said, all right, honestly, performed traditionally? I said, yeah. And he said, ah, it's probably been in the last seven years, but we had people pass out during the show. Like, we had to stop performing it because people were getting so ill because they did it as it would have been done where they had blood bladders on them and stuff like that to where blood spray was everywhere. And he said, so then they did an experimental version, which I would have loved to see about two years ago where they used candles to represent people's lives. And so if they were killed brutally, it would be the candle would be cut from their hands. So you would cut, cut the candle in half with a stage sword, or if they were killed, otherwise you'd blow out their candle. And it was very symbolic. Uh, but Lavinia has probably one of the most brutal deaths in the history of fiction. Lavinia is Titus Andronicus's daughter, his loving daughter. The first time she sees him, she says, my noble lord and beloved father. Something to that effect. So what happens to Lavinia? Well, Lavinia is uh, supposed to marry between Titus Andronicus's family and this other family and, and unite these two great families. Well, it doesn't go well. And the enemy's daughter, or uh, I'm sorry, the the sons of of Titus's enemies, um, rape her. But they don't want Titus Andronicus to know it was them. So what do they do? They don't kill her. They symbolically kill her. They cut out her tongue, and they cut off her hand, so she cannot even indicate who did it to her. And then they send her back. Oh, James, you left out one part though. Oh, what, what? What do they do with her hand? What do they do with her arms after they cut off her hands? Oh, crap. They, they shove tree branches into the arms. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, yep. Yep. I don't know that I knew that, by the way. Um, oh, uh, the Anthony Hopkins, ver- the, the movie version, that scene is, is draw dropping. Hmm. So she gets sent back and it gets, I mean, keeps getting worse because she wants to protect her father. She knows what's coming in some ways. She's the canary in the coal mine for like a better term. She's the sage that is trying, but she can't, she knows everybody is going to die and everything's going to go off. 
And who finally has to be the one to kill her? Titus. He kills her to end her shame. Uh, because she can't do anything. And it is one of the most brutal, heartbreaking. And Titus Andronicus is, is full of gruesome death. To get back at his enemy, he kills the two sons that raped his daughter and takes their blood and bones and grinds it down and bakes it into pastries and, mm-hmm. pours, and, and, and delivers it to her as a gift. And so she eats her own children. It's, it's nothing but gruesome. So why is it my favorite Shakespeare play? Because I think it's the one that has the most to say. It's it's it is. I mean, it is all about there is no glory in any of this. His going to war solves absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. It costs him everything he cares about. But at the same time, the other side doesn't do any better either. Both of these great families, quote unquote, end up with nothing. They end up gone, effectively yeah. removed from history. There's a reason effectively that Titus Andronicus is not Shakespeare or not Caesar or not. And it's because he may have been a great warrior. He may have been many things, but he destroys himself. But the death of Lavinia, because all she is, is a loving daughter. All she wants to do is protect her father and marry and continue his lineage. And she becomes effectively, arguably the first great victim and then it's just brutalized for the rest of the play until she is finally killed shortly before her father. Spoiler. Yeah, it's rough. it's a it's a rough watch. It's, but yeah, uh, just because knowing I had seen plenty of Shakespeare beforehand, and then I sit down and watch Titus, and I'm like, this was not typical Shakespeare for me, which is probably no, why no. I liked it so much because it wasn't the Shakespeare that was shoved down my throat. Yeah, yeah, no, I read it in high school. I had a high school teacher assign it, but even then it was, you know, this was considered one of his dirty works, one of his lesser works. And I'm like, mm-hmm. lesser nothing. It's 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 much closer to classic mythology. These are brutal people doing brutal things and nothing's going to work. And yeah, so I mean I think it's hard to top and that's why I jokingly said Martyrs is brave baby town frolics because actually it's awful close. Yeah, I think Lavinia and the character in Martyrs actually have a, quite a bit in common. They both are made to suffer and every can come up with the suffer. So I, that's mine. Uh, like I said, it's been adapted to film. Chad's right that the uh, Anthony Hopkins version of it is great. And I think, is that out of print now? Somebody yeah, told I think me it was, is. Somebody told me it was really hard to find now. And I'm I, I haven't been able to find it in a while. Because every uh, now and then I'll, I'll, I think you can maybe buy it on Amazon Prime to rent. I need yeah. to check that, but I haven't, I haven't it, seen it. But if you, even if you read it, uh, actually, when I was at the Globe, I bought that they had copies that were taken directly from the first folio, Shakespeare's actual writing, and I bought. You could buy the whole thing, but it's very expensive, or you buy a single work. And I bought Titus because Titus is my favorite, but it is, it is a bleak one. It is, uh, but if you've never read it or never watched any adaptations of it, check it out. But it is one of the most gruesome ongoing death, slow deaths that you can read in, in fiction or watch in, in film. If it's done as it's done in the play. Joe. Uh, so you went with a classic story, classic literature. I'm going to go with classic cinema. Not that don't I don't see the other ones. You better not steal mine. I can't. You There's no way. <laughs> I'd pay real money. If you, because I wouldn't know any better. I'd pay real money. If you follow this was last week on Bluey. Yeah, yeah and, and and mine is classic cinema. So all I'm saying is, mine watch is it. classic cinema. Mine's one of the probably the best death scenes. And the problem is, is that when you're so used to it now, because it's been so many years, that you don't, I, I, I you don't see it like you should have seen it in the theater in 1979 when you walked in. But it is the, one of the best death scenes of all time, and it's Kane and Alien. And it's gruesome and it's bloody and it's shocking and it works still to this day. But I feel like people, it doesn't have the same oomph. Like when Mrs. Bates turns around in the chair, doesn't have the same oomph now because you don't know what it was like to be in the theater in 1960 and never see anything quite like it. And you don't know what it was like to be in a theater in 1979 and they're just sitting there and nobody knows what's going to happen. And all of a sudden the shit busts out of his chest and starts to fling and everybody's screaming because Ridley didn't tell him there was going to be that much blood. And he happens to get some real reaction shot. 
gentlemen, it, I, 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 Robocop earlier is a good one, and it's right up there in the top two or three, but gruesome death scenes, and that is classic cinema, hard to beat Alien and the death of Cain. I agree. I'm asking your all's opinion. I don't. No, no. I, I don't think. I don't I, think. I, I don't. In terms of in terms of iconic deaths, yeah, it's it's up there. It's because it be happens in the, in the middle of the movie, and mm -hmm. I, even if you go, and I'm a huge Alien fan. I have the the quadrilogy, which technically is a tetralogy, over there on the shelf. Which and the making of Alien is only outdone by the making of Blade Runner, as far as one of the best documentaries ever about the making of a movie. I I could watch it over and over. And there's Go ahead. No, you go. There's three of those that I love. I haven't watched the making of Blade Runner in a long time just because it's six hours. But the making of Alien and then the Monty Python, the lawyer's cut about Monty Python throughout the years. So it's a three or four hour documentary. I could just watch those on repeat. I find them fascinating about how it all f came together. And them, and if you go through it in the actual of Dan O'Bannon writing this movie, and Ron Shusette, who's the other writer and executive producer, and them trying to figure out where is it at and how it works. And then once they finally get the screenplay out there and having all these people going, I hate this, I hate this, just keep reading. I hate this. I, Holy shit! Even when people are reading it, no matter how many times it was rewritten before it was shot, Kane and that scene and it coming out of his chest never touched. Well, That's too, what also, got the movie sold. And also, too, when that scene happened while they were filming it, none of the actors knew what was going to happen. That's what I'm saying. You, and Veronica Cartwright, when you see that shot of her, uh, of that close up of her ah, back with the blood, they knew that was going to happen. They just didn't know it was going to happen like that. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. it just works. It still works. My kid, by the way, tonight, as I was trying to get him to sleep, I failed. And his mother's now getting him to sleep. Uh, when it looked up at me all of a sudden and says, will you please tell Chad that I want to watch Alien? He'll get a kick out of that. <laughs> I'm glad you giggled. I can tell yeah. him tomorrow you got a kick out of it. <laughs> he told me today, you know, I like things a little spooky sometimes. Yeah, my daughter, my my daughter is now getting to the point where she, I'm like, what do you want to watch? Can we watch something scary? Which one? I'm like uh, the oldest. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, not the youngest. The youngest one gets too terrified of it, of literally anything. So she, <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, it's a show him Alien versus Predator the other day because it's PG-13, and then I got talked out of it. Yeah, don't start with that. I know, but I but I can't show him Alien either. He's still too young. Ugh. Yeah, don't start with that, and then still show too him. young. I'm running Ugh. out of things, Chad. He's Ugh. interested, and I'm running out of shit to show him. I wish there was like a TBS version of Alien I could show him. At least cut out the language so he wouldn't go to school. <laughs> Uses do he to pretend to be yeah, Fat Kodo. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> All right. All right. So Who's yeah, next? I am too. Uh, so I'm next. Uh, and it's, it's great that I'm last because uh, I don't think in, 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 in terms of classic cinema, there's nothing better than this. Uh, I am, of course, talking about the chest buster scene from Alien. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, gentlemen. It is uh, tough to beat. So, uh, no, this is actually the movie that I watched four days ago. And I said, oh, my God, this is the topic for an episode that we got to do. Um, I will tell you this. This is... <laughs> This is one critic's uh, a ver uh, explanation of the movie. Uh, a racer head meets Night of the Living Dead on the set of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't know what you're going to say. Street Trash from 1987. <laughs> I've seen parts of Street Trash. <laughs> James, have you ever seen even uh, five minutes of the movie called Street Trash from 1987? I've seen the trailer. Now, is okay. that the one that was shot on videotape? I don't uh, know if it was shot one. on videotape, but I will be honest with you from the looks of it, probably. Actually, you know, I don't think it was shot on videotape because here's why. I will talk about, I, before I get into the death, that because there there are many in this film, uh, it is actually directed by J. Michael Moreau. Muro, um, Muro. Uh, he honestly, he, this I think is one of the only, he only directed two films in his life, but he is mostly known as, he's a, he's a very 
very talented camera uh, camera person and he's done camera work on many many amazing films uh and he took this movie and shot it and the way it's shot guys it's beautiful it is beautifully shot for a movie that is a very very sea level at best horror film uh and just to tell you what the plot is of street trash it's about a man who runs a a, a, a liquor store in the middle of a, a very uh, urban area that's you know n- very low economic development um and he finds in the in his basement a car a crate of this cheap booze mm-hmm. that he figures he can sell to the homeless for a dollar and make a profit keep in mind it's 1987 a dollar goes a long way um so he starts selling this booze for a dollar and it uh and what it does is as the people drink it they slowly melt to death yeah uh now it's like the green bluish shit right yes um uh, i'm trying to remember what it's called i can't remember the name of it it has something viper but anyway that's not the point um now the, that's not the point. Death, he's about to tell us about a to... completely different movie no and that's the thing about this film that honestly honestly in itself could have been the plot of the movie and that's what it's built towards but it's actually like seven different stories that do not mingle at all together going on i mean it, there's also the story about a, a a vietnam vet a homeless man dealing with ptsd who just randomly kills people with a bone there's mm-hmm. a cop trying to solve the murder uh the, the murders and looking for this vet but then he gets pulled into another mystery that makes no sense and then over here you have necrophilia. Then over here you have a a a horrible horrible rape scene. Then over here you have some of the worst depictions of homeless people in 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 cinema history. Yeah. <laughs> um. But the death in particular is the very first introduction as to what this alcohol does. Because at, if you're watching this movie blind, you're like, oh, it's just a weird movie about homeless people. Uh, getting this booze and then he, the guy drinks it and then suddenly you he he steals the booze from another homeless man he runs into uh, a building that's been torn down he opens up the door to an, to no, to no, no walls or nothing and he sits down at a toilet and he proceeds to drink it and almost instantly he starts to melt in bright yellow and purple goo Mm-hmm. And he just keeps fa- and as he's screaming in terror, parts of him are falling off as his body just becomes more and more slime and, uh, you know, l- l- just just other viscid fluids. And then what happens at the end? He slowly as he liquefies is going into this toilet in the middle of nowhere. Until he's nothing but a puddle and you see the the toilet and his face stretched out as he moans his last breath. And it goes down the tubes. It 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 honestly is one of the most it is one of the most beautifully shot deaths in an otherwise trash film. (laughs) If you want to watch this movie and I cannot recommend that you do. Well, I don't remember it, it being shot beautifully. That's what I'm oh, confused about. They're, they're, they're I've s- seen it. It's hard to get through. It's, it, it is, is really it, disgusting, actually. It is disgusting. It's horrible to get through. But it is beautifully shot. Uh, I will say this. The, the the scene that leads to the death, uh, J. Michael uh, did steal uh, Evil Dead, Sam Raimi shot of the, the tracking shot. He did steal that. It go Because it, as the death, it leads... it. As the guy dies, it starts out in the street and then does that whoosh, whoosh, back into the toilet where you see his face. Uh, but there are some amazing, beautiful shots in this film. Uh, an otherwise movie that just does not belong, <laughs> should not have been put on the cinema, but it, it's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and special shout out to Pat Ryan, who's also in the film. Uh, most people won't know who Pat Ryan is if you're not a fan of trauma. Uh, but Pat Ryan is in this film as well. Other than that, there's not a whole lot of famous actors in it. All right. So do we have any honorable... Man, we could spend a week and I... Oh, yeah, I could do honorable mention. I honestly chose to stop and didn't even bother thinking of honorable mentions. I've I've, I've got one honorable mention that I had 
throw out off the top of my head. One of the things that you know we haven't we haven't talked a lot about uh, a lot about children's gruesome death. I, I mean, in children's work. Yeah, uh, not I'm children's. About to say, work. I I skipped one. There's a scene that's hard for me to watch in Doctor Sleep. Um, but no, what well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I know exactly. Yeah. Uh, but actually, you know, I, as I was prepping for this, I thought, you know, there's you could go back to Grimm's fairy tale, but actually. I know she's a complicated figure now, but um, J.K. Well, she was a complicated figure then. J.K. Rowling uh, in Harry Potter. There was a lot of stuff in the books, but then she has expanded that universe, so to speak. She's done short stories and expand, and you can go to the website and read a lot of these. And one of the things that I find most compelling, though, and it's one of my favorite characters. I wish John Cleese would have kept playing him in the films. Is nearly a headless Nick. Gentlemen, do you know Nearly Headless Nick's origin story? Yes, you've told it on the show before. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yes. What is it? Well, I don't remember. I don't remember. talked about it on the show. No, I've talked about him, why he's a ghost. I'm talking about his origin story about how he how he lost his head. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. He, Go ahead. He, 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 he tried to help a well-to-do individual. It mm-hmm. backfired, and they wouldn't let him try to correct it. They sentenced him to death by beheading. The problem is that they uh, perhaps willfully misplaced the grindstone to sharpen the axe. And so they, as he was kneeling over the chopping block to have his head removed, uh, they used the dullest axe they could find and hit him 45 times across the neck. Yeah. And it still didn't fully sever it. Ergo, nearly headless Nick. In the movies, it's a fun, oh, he's nearly had this, oh, it's a ghost. When you hear that full origin story and when you read that story in and of itself, it's a very gruesome thing because he basically tried to help somebody messed up. And instead of him being allowed to try to use his magic to fix it, they tried to execute him with an axe and, and more or less it's implied perhaps intentionally used a dull axe and hit him 45 times across the neck and still couldn't sever his head. Hmm. The well, way I, I picture that is pretty. Well, that is a thick neck guy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how strong John Cleese's neck is. There's an entire drama going on on that Twitter sphere. I don't really. Or X sphere. X sphere. I don't know. I I'm not calling it X. I think one of my honorable mentions would be uh, almost any death scene in Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. They're yeah. all done by Tom Savini, and they just all stuck in my head. Now, I mean, it's nope. even the guy they removed his face and he gets up and spits and he doesn't have any skin on his face and he does the whole spit thing that he always does. I, it's just, I don't know. They always stick with me. All right. Is that it, guys? So if you all have ideas, because I know there is a ton of movies that have gruesome death scenes in them that you're yelling oh, at the screen I mean, right now. Well, that I was we say, we do, could do, send them to us and we'll lovingly do a part two. I'd say we could even do one just in war films the problem is horror films are much more enjoyable because war films are often based on things yeah i know there's that scene in save it private ryan specifically where it's a slow slow death yeah and it's tough yeah 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 no, all right no, i mean yeah yeah uh oh man oh i was just saying about again the gray zone god there's some slow deaths in that and it's based on yeah no Ooh, oh, no Sorry. all right guys well this has been bonehead weekly Grrrr. <laughs>